Hey, hello and welcome back. And today I want to talk about another Rio Link camera. As mentioned in a previous video, Rio Link has been in the process of refreshing a lot of their hardware solutions. They're not like any other brand. They're gonna have cameras released every couple of years and they refresh the series as new hardware techniques land and different, more efficient hardware comes onto the market. These are devices that are going to be on for days, weeks, months, or even years at a time. Very rarely powered down because they're there to protect your home, your business, and more so it makes sense that when new hardware comes out for in terms of internal components that they jump onto the bandwagon and this the RLC 842A part of their new series for me is kind of like a decent little flagship model they don't really to my mind have a kind of a Reebok classic or an Adidas black they don't really have one solution that is kind of flagship, but I will say in terms of dome cameras, and if you're a business user, it's kind of one of the go-tos when you've got multiple corridors to cover. This for me is one of the best they've ever produced. And I've talked about Real Link a lot over the years. Let's face it, when it comes to buying a network attached storage device for the first time, you want to make the most of it. You want to use it for Plex, use it for backups, use it for all kinds of bits and bobs, use it for virtual machines, a little bit of music streaming. But one of the things a lot of you end up using when you start going, well, I'm only using about 20% of this, what shall I do with the other 80? Well, a lot of you turn to surveillance. You turn around to taking advantage of that premium software that most NAS drives arrive with. These surveillance stations, your QVR pros, your surveillance centers. These allow you to attach multiple cameras in your home or business environment over Wi-Fi or over LAN connections and defend and protect your most important assets. Now, the reason I talk about this one being one of the best out there, not only from Reolink and what I'd like to think of as their flagship model, um, isn't just because of the hardware inside, but it's because of the price tag. It knocks around for about $99. So again, that does kind of differ depending on where you shop around. I think it, you can get it in some places because it's listed not just on their own website, but other places, about 110, 120 in some places. But if you can get it at a decent enough price, I think 100 quid here in the UK, you end up with, I think, the perfect balance of what you they do promise for their brands. It's not perfect. There's a few things that I don't like, and I will talk about that. But we're talking about a 4K, 8 megapixel, 25 frames per second camera that's PoE, that has five times optical zoom, very important, and allows you a very versatile means with which to deploy it, whether you want to use it with your smart home stuff, your Alexas, your Google Assistant, that sort of thing, or you want to take advantage of it with their own software. There's uh, subscription-based cloud services if you want to go down that route, or take advantage of a 256 uh, gigabyte uh, SD card inside that's not included. But for me, this is a camera that's going to pair mwah, très bon with a network attached storage device there. Now, before we go any further, let's take a little look at this. Let's get that seal broken there. And again, I had so much difficulty with these on an other camera video that I did a little while ago. See, there we go, it's not gonna trick me twice. Um, this is an outdoor camera. It supports IP66 weatherproofing there. So again, that's frost, that's dust, uh, that's um, rain, obviously not full submergence. Uh, again, that would be IP67, I believe. Um, but it also has IK10 um, vandal proofing built in there. So we are talking 20 joules of physical damage five times in succession. So again, we are doing a destruction series soon. We're gonna be utilizing um, a different camera for that that's part of the 4.2 series. I think the 4.2 WA. Um, but this camera does have that built in as well. So when that camera goes, when that video goes live, do know that the physical damage that that camera can withstand, uh, withstand also applies to this one as well. You've got your kind of key component documents here. You've got your EU declarations with regards to physical properties inside there. And again, a lot of that is to do with security, but also wastage. Um, on top of that, you've got the installation guide if you want to take advantage not only of normal physical installation, but if you want to take advantage of the installation where you want to make sure it is weather tight. So that's taking advantage of the cable clips I'm going to talk about later on and more. Um, you've also got first time instructional and setup manual there. And again, multilingual as you would expect, it's full of diagrams. It's actually, I've utilized one of these in previous generation Reolink cameras 
it's not that kind of shoddy, poor grammar manuals that a lot of these arrive with that just sort of fold out that go, get camera happy time, which is the last thing I want to read. Um, on top of that, you've got the stickers for the back with regards to setting it up on the wall. So that's the wall adhesive thing here that lets you know where to put in the raw plugs. There's also raw plugs and the screws included. I'll get to that. There's also the stickers in multiple languages that say, get the F out of my place. I've got cameras. Which again, that felt a little bit like a run of prophylactics there, but okay. And for those of you who don't know what that word is, well done. Uh, more EU declaration stuff there. No more there. We've got a LAN cable there. This camera is PoE, power over Ethernet. So again, as good as that ca uh, this cable is, it's pretty short for my liking. I'm not a big fan. Uh, they've gone with Cat6 there with extra protective coating there, which is good. But it's still an incredibly short cable there. And I understand they probably think people have got camera uh, cables already not in, knocking around in their offices. But that's a really short cable for me. And if I don't find another cable in there, that's going to be a big no-no from me at the moment. I like the camera, but that seems a little bit penny pinchy. Um, that is our cable cover there. That is what you put around the connected cables to make sure water, dust and more can't get inside them. Um, that's part of that proofing. We've got the Allen key and the screws for installation there. Again, this is a dome camera, so we are talking there on the ceiling, maybe on a wall at a pinch. There is a huge amount of protected foam there inside. And then we've got, let's get it, the camera itself. That's our lot, so no big extra cable there. So again, that lack of a longer cable does disappoint me. I know this is, you know, a hundred quid camera that's, you know, all of its money's gone into its hardware. But it's a real shame they didn't include an extension cable. We've seen them include them in some of their cameras. The other camera that I just mentioned earlier, um, their Wi-Fi dome camera there, it arrived with an enormously long power extender there. So they clearly understand that cameras like this need to be installed on ceiling areas, they need there needs to be that extension, hence why I'm a little disappointed it didn't include that. Um, get that out of there, we'll leave that box there on the table, why not? Let's have a look at that so we see how it compares. Remove our plastic, chuck you in there, and there is our big old dome camera there. For, now once again, this is bigger than the typical dome camera. Just to put that into perspective, that is their dome there. That is the sheer scale of it. It's a big old upgrade there between those two cameras. Now, this dome camera has um, LEDs there on the front. 24 infrared LEDs there for night vision. It's got the auto switch where it will flick between night and day as needed. On top of that, with those LEDs, it covers 100 feet distance there in terms of night vision when it flicks between them. And again, it's a superior lens being utilized here. Again, going up to 4K. 8 megapixel ca uh, camera lens there that has that five times optical zoom that's going to be incredibly helpful for kind of pinpointing things like license plates or making sure you can track and get some facial stuff there of people going past. On top of that, it supports the codec H.265, so again, a much better compression technique to make the most of that footage. You can get about 150 um, to 160 hours a full um, depth recorded footage on a 256 gig card, but again, it also has that recycling uh, built into it with both the NAS software and Realink's own software as well. Have the microphone for recording um, uh, kind of any audio there if people are going past. It doesn't have audio out, there's no speaker there, but at least you're gonna get that recorded capture in. If anyone says anything like, break the door, Lenny, write Lenny down. Um, Again, it's got that SD card slot built in, so you are going to need to remove some of the screw holes to get into that SD card slot inside there. But again, it's a big old camera there we are talking about there. It's a big unit we're talking. Now, on top of that, we've talked about the vandal proofing there. What I meant by that is a lot of the time with dome cameras, people try to smash them. Now, you can spray paint them, of course, if you're going to break into premises, but then you've got to get close. A lot of the time, people try to get out of the camera's line of sight to smash it. And that's where, if this is up high, you're already going to lose a lot of the energy as um, something is physically going upwards. So, although realistically, this isn't going to withstand like a bullet um, a kind of damage there. 20 joules is pretty good in terms of what a human being can deliver in a single blow. And remember, it can take up to five of those. Again, it's not indestructible, but still, when you take height into consideration, that's going to be a decent level of protection to make sure this withstands and survives long enough for a lot of that footage to travel down the land towards another intended topic. Do bear in mind as well that 
this camera can be utilized with a lot of MVRs that have um, edge recording. So a lot of the time with um, smart edge recording into cameras like this, the result is that not only is the footage being recorded onto the SD card, but it's also being parallel recorded onto a remote recorded area, such as cloud storage or more likely a network attached storage device. And having that two tier recording pattern can be exceedingly helpful. And then a camera that can support that with the right software is always gonna get a big tick from me. It has two years of manufacturer's warranty as well. So again, two years is fairly normal in this industry for cameras outside of the high end kind of OTT enterprise stuff out there as well. Those ones normally go up to about five years for those cameras. So again, we're not really looking too much at those. It's still a fairly impressive, sturdy piece of kit that is going to bruise my knuckles if I keep doing that. Um, I will say things that I'm less keen on there. Again, it is a POE camera, but if you are looking at this and you want POE, that Wi-Fi camera uh, for another... 10 20 dollars version of this with the same hardware the same camera there although it does go up to um, a low density 4k or fully fledged 1080 that's one other difference between them i think this camera could do better with that kind of spec and wi-fi inside um but 8 megapixel 4k a lot of you that have got a larger surface here if you're covering wider ground you're going to see the benefit in that kind of recorded footage there now i talked about this in other videos and this is a hardware review so i'm not going to talk too much about software but um when it comes to pairing this with a nas these days thanks to a lot of network attached storage devices getting a lot more lean and efficient about what they can do with those camera feeds such as qnaps uh, taking advantage of the google tpu that little m2 card there uh, the coral which is about 20 30 dollars but allows you an enormous increase in ai supported services on the camera for uh, facial recognition or object recognition there the camera already has vehicle and human recognition built in so if you are going to utilize their own software in conjunction with it the result is that rather than getting you know crap alerts that go oh there has been movement thanks camera you want to know that it is a vehicle it is a human so you can tailor your response accordingly and also tailor alerts in conjunction with that um slightly more limited object recognition that doesn't go as far down as facial recognition or license plate recognition but still gives you enough to be working with within that budget price point for a camera also bear in mind again for some of you a hundred dollars or a hundred pounds may seem quite a lot for a camera but bear in mind this is something that's going to be on for days weeks months or years so that number has to be divided over that length of time and do 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 factor in the value of what you are protecting. That's really important. A lot of you when you buy cameras, you make economies on security devices like these. Not just that, we go with alarms and stuff like that. And people make economies not realizing that you need to weigh up. It's like when we look at NAS and RAID and how much you're prepared to spend on robust and second and third tier backup solutions. You get out what you put in. And $100 in that context is very very low so again it's still a great camera for me and if the this and the wi-fi camera i've talked about recently are good examples of the latest refresh from real link to their range and the rest of them are going to reflect that kind of price versus hardware balance it's a solid win from me i just wish that maybe an inclusion of uh, an extension cable built in and a wi-fi option of this camera by default would have been quite choice there but that's not for everyone some of you are just replacing a camera that's already there and therefore an additional LAN cable at that length 10 20 30 meters thereby increasing the price 10 20 30 dollars may not have been as desirable but again that's not for everyone do stay tuned for the software review of this camera where we're going to be looking at multiple rio link cameras at the same time to give us a better understanding about the differences between them and how it justifies those little price differences within the portfolio so hopefully you can choose the right camera for your needs do stay tuned for that and of course we will be looking at the destruction 
of this camera. We've got a whole destruction series for early 2022 where we're looking at different hardware devices that promise a certain degree of hardware protection from frost, from fire, from physical damage, from flooding. We're going to be testing different devices up to their own extremes to prove their point. And Real Link is very much going to be in that with this destruction series. So do stay tuned for that. But if you've enjoyed this video, click like. If you want to learn more, do visit the links in the description to NAS Compares where we talk a lot more broadly about choosing the right IP camera as well as hardware reviews for this camera and others in the new series from Real Link. Also, take advantage of the free advice section over at NAS Compares. It's genuinely free. It's manned by two humans, me and Eddie the web guy. We try to answer every one. It might take us an extra day or so to answer them because we're humans with lives. We do, we do things, but we do try to answer everyone. We do nothing with your email. Couldn't care less about your email, to be honest. Um, and there are donate buttons there. Use them, ignore them. It's up to you. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.